welcome to the fifth staging of the Paul Laurie Golf Centre Challenge, where this year's opponent is Nicholas Colsarks, the Belgian bomber famously playing alongside Paul at the Miracle of Medina. So how's he looking forward to the challenge here at Aberdeen? It's a good test for me. If I can take Chippy on the short nine, it's good for me. You know, it's good practice, so uh, I'll try my best. I mean, he has, of course, the local knowledge, but I have a little bit of... I hope I would have bring my flair today. And how's Paul looking forward to playing his big hitting opponent? I would imagine that this afternoon he'll be pretty tough, but uh, I'm hoping that uh, not too tough this morning. But you never know. I mean, obviously, Nicholas has been a great player for a long time, and it was great to be teammates with him at Medina. Uh, we've gotten on very well, you know, for a long, long time, and I'm looking forward to, to see what he brings. I'm sure he'll bring a lot. Great to see these two back on the course together again after what was a special moment over in Medina and a friendship that's sure to last. I came as friends, but maybe not leave as one. Ooh, that was fighting dark, wasn't it? Eh? Well, with the gauntlet well and truly thrown down, Nicholas ready to take on his opponent, the short par 3 course and the Aberdeen crowds. As well as a well timed car alarm. Has it affected him? Not at all. Nicely onto the middle of the green. Well. Really? Is this how's it going to be? Paul employing a few of the locals to help out there. Nicholas, no problem. Car alarms, everything still nicely onto the middle of the green. And a real birdie opportunity. Now, what can our host do in reply? Of course, famously aced this shot in the very first challenge match against the Lathabal. Not today though. Two nice tee shots. But uh, neither golfer was able to convert for birdie. So the opening hole halved with pars and it was on to the second. Now no car alarm should be reaching Nicholas down here. And the big hitting Belgian just hitting it a little bit too big. And through the green. Well, an opportunity for Paul, perhaps, early on. Fairly straightforward, these first couple of holes. And Paul likes the look of it. And no wonder. A tremendous shot. Paul would see that in for a two. And he would take a one-hole lead onto the third. Where both golfers were a little bit wild with their tee shots. Paul chipping on from the back and leaving that a little bit short. Not the easiest of lies. The course here really is in fantastic condition. The, the rough's been allowed to grow. It really frames the holes. A little bit of water, of course. And it really is looking in top condition. Nicholas deciding perhaps just to take a little less loft and roll the ball up. He was closer. He would sink his putt. Paul would miss his. It was back to all square. The fourth was halved. The fifth, well, we'll gloss over that. Paul lost the ball. I'm sure he'll want you all to know. And uh, well, we can move down on to the sixth. So with that lost ball, Paul was now one down and looking to do something about it. Very nice tee shot, just a little bit short, but bang on the stick all the way. Nicholas pulled his a little bit more into the centre of the green, leaving a longer putt. He was first up. And in for a two. Nice to see the Belgian get his first birdie of the day. Uh, could Paul see his in? Oh, just off to the right. And two up for Cole Sartz. The next hole, the seventh, was halved. So we can move down on to the eighth, where both players have just missed the green. Uh, longer this hole, harder to find the green. And Paul, well, he's now looking to live up to that nickname of his, Chippy. Very nearly holing out. Marvellous stuff. Now, from a pretty similar position... Nicholas Colesart, oh, and just coming up a little bit short. Not too much sympathy from Paul there. And, well, Paul getting one back. He would hole out for a three. Nicholas a four, and it's on to the final hole here. 
at the Paul Laurie Golf Centre. Long par three again, and Paul just a little bit short with his tee shot. Now, could Nicholas capitalise on Paul missing the green? Stretches lead to two, perhaps, to take into the afternoon match down at Inch Marlow. Well, he's certainly inside the host. And it'll be Paul to go first as they come up to the green. Just off the edge. Uh, going with the putter. Not chipping this one. But it looks like he knows what he's doing. Oh, dead centre. Tremendous two to finish his morning's play. And uh, put the pressure on his opponent. He needs to hold this now if he's going to take the slenderest of advantages. Down to Inch Marlow. Paul delighted with that. And the mor the morning's match finishes all square. A good attempt by Nicholas, just missing to the left. Uh, as the players head off. Well, now with a short 20 minute journey by car between the two centres, we get a chance to sit in and, well, what do these professionals chat about in the car? Is it tactics? I've never ever driven in the video before, it's quite odd, isn't it? So, well, like, you've never been in Pimp My Ride? <laughs> Strangely enough, no. Huh? No. I would have thought with a car this red, you would have been. Yeah, you're, you're like this. We're at uh, Michael, who you know is carrying for me, and uh, we were at Wentworth for the PGA, and we get on the range. <laughs> and you know how they've got the music on now? Yeah, yeah, on yeah. range, and I can't stand music, I'm, I'm really old. So we get on the range, and we're hitting balls. And the music was quite loud. And I'm hitting balls next to the Chinese lad. Um, Lee Tong? Yeah. Who I think is quite funny, got a good sense of humour. And I said to Michael, how loud is this bloody music? And the, the bleak tongue just turned around and he went, You old. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I said. You old. You so old, man. Michael just loved it. <laughs> well, I am, yeah. You old. Right. Well, now that we've established that uh, Paul is old because he doesn't like music on the driving range, it's down to Inch Marlow. Fantastic facility. A little bit longer than the uh, other golf centre. A couple of drivable par fours. And uh, first up, after winning the ninth, we're back with Paul. Fantastic crowds here at Inch Marlow. Uh, well, he quite likes that. Opening par three down the hill. 179 yards. Nicely onto the middle of the green. And it's over to Nicholas. He really does launch quite a, a high and mighty ball, the Belgian. And... Another one heading down, but I can tell you that's heading straight for the pin. Keep your eyes on the flag. There you go, right over the hole, hitting the flag on the way down. Fantastic opening tee shot. As the crowds head on down. Now, can he convert for a birdie two? Paul's putt stayed out. No, oh, he certainly can. And that's a tremendous start to the afternoon from the Belgian. One up again as the crowds move round. Now, Paul, well, fair to say he pulled his tee shot at the second, had to take a drop. This is his third from the rough over the wall. Pretty impressive, giving himself a very good chance of a four. Nicholas also missed the green and chipped up. Short par four this, so... Uh, the Belgian has a chance to start with two birdies, never anywhere else, right in the middle of the hole, as soon as that ball left the putter face. So two up to Nicholas Colsart, and well, that's how the score remained after the third, both halved with pars. So here we are on the fourth, a 313 yard par four. Nicholas pulled his tee shot off to the left. Paul nicely onto the green but just running through and these players going for it trying to entertain the crowds no holding back and we can see where Nicholas ended up just over there by the trees uh, his back swing impaired a little bit and just make it onto the edge of the green and he struggled here and Paul took the hole with a par a little bit scrappy though, so as we move down to the fifth, we're looking for something a little bit better. Laurie now just one down. 
and the Scotsman teeing off first at the short par three and over the flag oh nice bit of spin tremendous stuff oh what a wonderful tee shot that was in for a nice easy birdie two the match all square after five as we move on to the 285 yard uh, par four sixth again the players going for the green Nicholas a little bit right having to negotiate that tree in front of him now uh, oh but he's done it nicely and the ball releasing out into the middle of the green let's see what he's got left for his birdie not too bad from where he was that's for sure Paul also to the right sitting down but uh, he's beginning to get his eye in living up to that name of Chippy very nearly holding out for a two that was good enough for a birdie three and Paul took a one hole advantage down onto the seventh and he came up short with his tee shot here at the par three seventh so Nicholas trying to capitalise another good looking tee shot that is right at the stick once again just running on maybe ten feet past great effort from the tee now Paul from off the edge under a little bit of pressure to hold on to that lead but once again deadly chipping on lovely touch around the greens his three was secure good enough to hold on to his one shot lead with that part as the players drove over the corner of the 280 yard par 4 8th Paul not quite so much over the corner coming up short and right having to chip up over the bunker and a little bit of check on the ball stopping it there just past the flag he had that for his birdie Nicholas well he really did clear the corner and left himself a very very awkward chip for his second shot look at this having to land it short through the semi rough through the fringe and even then yes there's quite a slope in this green more than the camera shows perhaps both players would take two putts from there the match still one to the good for Paul Laurie as they played the last 325 yard par 4 another one for the players to go for Paul pushing his to the right as you can hear and well managed to avoid uh, the crowd but also avoided the green well was there a sliver of hope for our guest this year to tie things up on the final hole well, he's pulled that left towards the trees, towards the wall and eventually towards the green how about that for a kick oh but just running off and uh, looking for the deflection there not quite working out both players now short right as these big crowds make their way up to the final green now Paul he's really got his eye in with the uh, the lob wedge today and once again on the last a oh, fantastic little chip shot there and it's going to be a struggle now for Nicholas to square things up you feel he has to hold this well not a bad effort I guess if you can see that putt in then he's going to have to force Paul to hole out for the victory this for his birdie oh dear oh and just picking that up so Paul with two putts for the victory well I'm sure Nicholas will just stand back and let him get on with it enjoy his little moment of glory you see he tried to push him offline and he's not having it Paul you're really going to have to earn this well it's not quite how he won the, the Open Championship in 99 but a nice victory all the same and great atmosphere here between the players and the crowd and a victory for Paul. Great fun, uh, great to have Nico. Um, obviously we had some nice uh, golf out there, some birdies which is what you want to see. There's a lot of people came to Inchmarlow this afternoon so I don't think they'd had kind of any sort of top level pro golf out here so it was nice for them to come along and watch me hit a few poor shots in the trees but make a few chip shots close to the hole so and a narrow defeat for this year's opponent but how did he enjoy the event i think this is a very well run event because they even have people in the trees that kick the ball out so it was uh well i wasn't able to pull it off but chippy as he usually does 
uh, with a lob wedge in his hand gets it up close and he was one at playing alas so it was game over for me and how did our guest enjoy interacting with the impressive crowds walking right alongside the players during the match it's uh, it's pretty cool you can interact with the crowd a bit more you can uh, you can you know trash talk your opponent a bit more than you would usually do on tour which uh, which is a, a delight to do with somebody like like Paul because he kind of barks back very quickly so it's uh, <laughs> I, I had a good time doing it and what about a final word from our host reflecting on this year's challenge match at the two different centers it's nice when it comes to the last hole even if it was one upper level or it's nice for it to go all the way uh, great that so many people came. Uh, obviously, massive thanks to Eric Herd at Farm Foods, who sponsors it every year for us. Huge supporter of golf uh, in Scotland. And uh, I think everyone's had a great day. Congratulations, Paul. And we'll see you all again next year. <laughs>